Michigan is a water state. Anybody that lives around here knows there's water everywhere. If you could actually get up and get a bird's eye view, you'd see water everywhere. It's almost like they went out of their way to pick the, one of the worst possible locations for this thing. This company kind of showed up out of nowhere about six or seven years ago. We know very little about Michigan Potash uh, Company other than what we've been told by Theodore Pagano, who is their owner and primary stockholder. This fellow came along, bought up most of the existing leases that were expiring, and is now thinking he's going to make a go of it with no experience, no plant. No uh, track record at all of having uh, uh, built any other potash or mining facility in the United States. He has never built a refinery. They're winging it with a small amount of knowledge to hope that they can do this right, which is really frightening when you're using injection wells. The nature of the technology they'll be using requires the, the, the drawdown of uh, quite a bit of water. They're proposing uh, 1,200 gallons per minute initially. You know, 1.7 million gallons of water per day is a lot of water, an awful lot of water. Unlike Nestle, which would sell it as bottled water, and that water somehow gets back into the hydrogeocycle, this water becomes contaminated and it's lost forever. These wetlands are all interconnected around here. Most of them originate in the area where they want to put this plant. These streams, these wetlands, and shallow aquifers are all interlaced, partly underground, partly on the surface. They all drain into the Muskegon River. Ultimately, everything draws from the Muskegon. Everything ultimately is connected. It's not just rural areas here that this attaches itself to. If Michigan Potash Company pollutes this water, it will probably affect the, the region as a whole. The Muskegon River goes all the way from Higgins Lake to Lake Muskegon and then into Lake Michigan. It's 227 miles long and it goes through a number of communities where people's home wells are on that water and city wells are on that water. Big Rapids gets its water from the Muskegon, as does Reed City, as does Everett, and you can go upstream and downstream and see numerous towns and cities and individuals whose water comes from the aquifer of this river. It's an area where you just can't imagine anybody in their right mind would consider piping strong brine solutions. If there's a large spill within a very short period of time, that water is, is just entering the creeks, the streams, the shallow aquifers, even the deeper aquifers, it's just a disaster waiting to happen. There is a, a movement within the state and elsewhere now to commercialize water. Uh, we're seeing our area, which is, uh, had been pristine farmland 30 years ago, gradually turned into an industrial zone. There are some people who, who want it. Um, they feel that they're going to get rich. I don't know anyone around here who has ever gotten rich from any mining in the area. The world outlook for potash is very, very poor, very, very depressed prices, and the economic reports we see indicate that that isn't going to change anytime soon. The land around here is pristine. It's gorgeous. I grew up here running through these very same woods. And I'm thrilled that my daughters will be able to do that as well. Our livelihood is being threatened by a gentleman who has no ties to this area, who has no concern for the legacy that we're leaving behind for our children. And that's what really frightens me.